Secret Archives of the Vatican's music over the last 30 years has dipped very deeply into South Asian, Middle East and Central Asian themes. That kind of Eastern sound is what we've been known for. However, the last couple of years, I discovered the whole Norse neo-folk, heathen, neo-pagan, rootsy, ritual folk music of bands like Vardruna and Heilung and Neatland and Eldream and a host of others. Absolutely loved it. And back in secret archives of the Vatican's history, there was always a little element of medieval music. And medieval music and Middle Eastern music totally intertwined and share a lot of common modes and a lot of instruments have common roots. So it didn't seem strange to me, although I can see that it might have been a bit annoying to some of our long-term fans that there was this apparent kind of change of direction. I'm also a great believer in being authentic and being true to who we are. I've studied Arabic, I've travelled in the Middle East, my musical partner Louis and myself really started working together during the Asian underground scene in the early 90s, so that South Asian thing and the Middle Eastern thing I think are very much us. I think we are being authentic when we explore those areas. Louis is totally English. I've been born and brought up in England, but my parents were from Ireland, and on one side of the family goes back to the Normans. So Ireland, like England, very influenced by the various Norse invasions. That Norse heritage is therefore technically part of my heritage, albeit a fairly small one. So every now and again, I've come across artists who have opened up an idea for me. So one of the first bands I heard who connected the Norse with the Irish was a band called Norse Gale who did music, I think, for the Valhalla Vikings sequel. And suddenly it was like, yeah, you know, it's okay to connect different parts of your heritage and bring it into your modern music. But I was then left with the question, how do I connect up the Middle Eastern side of things with this Northern European folky rootsy thing. So one of the first things that I heard was a track by Sawulo, and I'll put the details on here, where the original version was their normal European folkiness, and then they brought out a version with Turkish Baklama Saz on it, and it sounded incredible. It was somehow simultaneously European and Middle Eastern and rootsy. And I thought, okay, maybe it's okay for me to connect these things up. Now, just recently, I came across an artist called Trago, who is Greek and is really into the whole Norse neo-folk thing and is making music in that vein. And I think he's got the same initial clash of how do I connect this alien culture with my culture? I like it so much and I want to play with it but it's not actually my culture totally he's further away from it than I am but I found a video on YouTube and if I can find it I'll put it in the notes where he talks through the writing process for a recent release the track was called The Wisdom of Odin and it's a collaboration Trago himself creates the music and does the vocal but there's a collaboration another vocalist Jacob Spurlock now, the thing that I picked up on, and once again, I was really happy to hear somebody saying and doing this, was he said, I'm Greek, not Norse. So he gave himself permission to play with the rhythms a little bit, to play with the melodies a little bit, to have an authentic Greek element to music that was actually very pagan and very Norse. And I thought, finally, we've got a couple of artists who are in the similar position to us in that 
we're in a particular culture from a particular culture wanting to express particular cultures but we also have a root in a different culture and it's okay to bring those things in At the end of the day all the music that all these bands are doing in this scene is 100 percent unauthentic anyway nobody's making music that was actually like it was back in viking and saxon times it was basically nobody knows what that music sounded like here and there we've got the words from poems here and there we've got one or two musical instruments and we can extrapolate some knowledge from that but at the end of the day we have no idea what music was like back in those days even our early medieval music is from two or three hundred years at least after the historical periods we're thinking about so all these bands are doing is trying to express something without worrying too much about being authentic you can't be authentic but on that basis it means it's absolutely fine to bring in modern ideas and modern combinations at the end of the day we're recording on modern technology and sharing it on the internet what we're not doing is sitting around a campfire with a kravik lyre in a field singing war songs to a bunch of guys who are about to go off and join the shield wall and actually it's quite liberating it means we can mix whatever we like we always have done that anyway and we're going to continue but it's nice now just seeing that we're not the only people doing unusual mixes or pushing the boundaries and seeing what's there there's other acts doing it there's a lot of amazing music out there so check it out